Test match rugby, folks. The final men's 15s test match of the year sees the old rivals, South Africa and England, going back at it from Twickenham. We're going to go through some lineups, some stats, predictions, recent history. You guys can let us know your thoughts on who you reckon is going to get it done. If you're wondering if the England rugby store are doing Black Friday sales, yes, they are. If you want some England rugby gear, check the link down in the description. Rugby gear is always... A good idea for Christmas, I find. Um, fourth in the world against fifth in the world. I don't think England can move in their rankings no matter the result. But if uh, the South Africans get a big win, they could, well, I say big, I'm talking 16 or more. Uh, they could potentially pip the All Blacks for that third spot, the old bronze medal in the world rankings. But that's not really going to matter. Uh, it's not really going to be in anyone's mind going into this one. It's just England against South Africa. And it's always... Uh, a pretty cracking one between these two sides. I feel like they don't like each other that much, but that may just be uh, because they've recently played a World Cup final, you know, back in 2019. Uh, for England, they have been able to keep things relatively stable, remembering this match falls outside the test window, so not every player is available uh, for their side, although England, I believe, have got all their guys available because, you know, the RFU and the Premiership clubs have got that kind of relationship where they can get the players released. Interestingly, Michael Vunipola gets a start. Jamie George gets a start. So there's a couple of the veterans stepping up uh, to start against uh, South Africa and Kyle Sinclair continuing on. It's not like the other guys have been dropped. They have just been rotated to the bench. And Eddie basically mentioned that in a lot of these positions, he's just swapping his starters for his finishes. There's no kind of deeper logic to it at least he's not alluding to any like he thinks this guy has an edge over that guy in certain positions or against certain players it seems like it's just a bit of rotation uh johnny hill and maro toje are the uh, the second rowers so that's i think pretty steady as she goes as well there's no changes there from last week and i think uh most england fans would be about as happy as you can get uh, with that selection, maybe I'm mistaken, but I feel like that's a pretty useful locking duo. Uh, they seem to they seem to work pretty well in tandem. Obviously, Maro was having to do a lot of work at lineout time last week without kind of a lineout uh, option in the back row, but that's changed this week with Alex Coles being back into the 23 and in the number six jersey. And Eddie basically said he wanted an extra lineout option against South Africa, so he didn't. Seem to have too many worries about the New Zealand defensive lineout capabilities, but maybe not so much the case against South Africa. So it's an extra lineout option with Alex Coles. Maybe you lose a bit of that extra dynamism that Sam Simmons has on the ground, but to be fair, New Zealand were able to keep him relatively quiet last week. Tom Curry and Billy V continue on at 7 8. Tom Curry made a million tackles last week, which is kind of to be expected. Van Portfleet continues on at 9. Obviously, didn't have his finest hour. Uh, against the All Blacks last week, but the guy's got bags of potential, so Eddie's not uh, been tempted to withdraw him and um, you know give him a break. He's showing some faith in him, which is, I reckon, kind of pleasing. It's a vote of confidence for him, so he continues on at 9. Marcus Smith's still there at 10. Uh, Farrell's still there at 12, and Tui Lange's still there at 13. So the spine of the team is looking largely pretty stable. Again, Freddie Stewart's still at 15. Tommy Freeman's come in on the right wing for Jack Knoll. And then uh, Johnny May continues on on the left. Uh, he's been kind of much maligned, as some people pointed out. Uh, we've seen him get burned a couple of times for pace as he gets uh, gets on into his career. But I still think he had a pretty good game last week. Uh, Cowan Dickey, Genge, and Stewart at the front row. Remember, Stewart came off the bench and scored two tries last week, so watch out for him. He'll be doing well to match anywhere near that performance level. Dave Ribbons is still there. Sam Simmons drops to the bench. Ben Young's Henry Slade. Jack Knoll, that's the um, the finishes, essentially, as Eddie would say. So, uh, yeah, relatively stable with Tommy Freeman being the only real kind of uh, change alongside Alex Cole. So one in the forwards, one in the backs. Otherwise, it's just rotation for guys starting uh, and finishing. For South Africa, they have been forced to make a few more changes with the unavailability of certain players, but the front row is unchanged. Ox and Chair Bongi and Bonambi Franz Mohuba. Uh, I think you'd be pretty happy with that if you're a South Africa fan. Them going toe to toe with the English Ford Pack uh, is going to be really one to watch. I mean, if you remember back to the World Cup final, it was certainly uh, a big factor, I think, in South Africa's go forward, although we're uh, long removed from that. Um, that game now. Eben gets a start this week after being in an unfamiliar bench position last week. So he is alongside Marvin Ori. And then uh, Steve Kulisi, Franco Mosto, and Ivan Rus are the back row with uh, Visa obviously being one of the unavailable players. It's kind of to be expected to see him 
absent, but Evan Ruiz is one of these young gun players that South African fans are dying to see get more minutes, and he actually gets some, so uh, I think we'll be watching him with interest. Khaleesi, though, just quietly, like he wasn't um, touted around too much about, oh, why didn't he get nominated for World Player of the Year and whatnot? Just quietly, he's been doing pretty bloody good this year and uh, kind of exemplified by a top performance last week. He was just cleaning out, getting triases, putting in big tackles for days. So, um, yeah, pleased to see more of the same from him in his final performance for South Africa for the year. Five to clerk, Damien Willems in 9-10. So, not tempted to quite chuck in Marnie Libok into the deep end just yet. He still continues on from the bench despite a great cameo last week. Uh, Willems seems to just play anywhere in the back line, depending on who gets injured, doesn't he? So he ended up on like the right wing last week, but he gets another crack at 10. I'll be keen to see who does the goal kicking, whether it's Faf or whether it's Damien. Um, but yeah, continue on nice. So another chance for Damien. I think Jacques Nina but basically said he wants to see more of Damien at 10, hence Marnie still riding the pine. Damien Dillander back to a more familiar 12. Uh, spot this week. Remember, Esther Hazen's another one of the guys unavailable. They wanted to see him have a run last week, so they moved Dylan into 13. So back to the familiar 12 jersey for Damien, and then Jesse Creel comes back into the 23 at 13. Another one of the guys who's a little bit been, I want to say kind of like Johnny May, uh, a little bit much maligned, uh, Jesse Creel, but I think especially defensively, the guy has been pretty much safe as houses this season, hasn't he? For the Springboks, he's certainly not able to unlock defenses like Lukanyo Arm has been doing, but I think he's been just quietly doing all right. Uh, Kurtley Aronson, speaking speaking of unlocking defenses, was majestic last week. Scored some tries, set one up, and then Makazola Mapimpi, who I think scored against England in their last game, uh, he is back after a week out. So a uh, familiar left-wing spot for him. And then Vili LaRue, who helps with the old playmaking, had 20-odd passes last week. Uh, continues on at 15. Benchwise, Michael Mark, Stephen Kitsoff, Thomas Tutoy is back in, so that's a pretty mean looking bomb squad to come in. Michael Van Staden is there, Quokka Smith is there, and Quokka's been a bit of a pocket rocket when he's been coming on as well. Uh, Jaden Hendricks is back in the 23 alongside Kane and Moody as well. More minutes for that young man, and then as I mentioned, Marty Libok is there too. So, yeah, despite the fact that South Africa is without some guns, big guns, I still think it's a pretty gun looking side, so I am very keen. Uh, to see how this one goes. Stats-wise, both sides love a wee more. Both England and South Africa love more. I don't love them all too, but uh, South Africa, especially nine times a game. England, six times a game just behind Ireland. So two of your top mall sides. And uh, both sides have scored mall tries recently. South Africa got some good pay against the Italians there. Uh, although New Zealand showed you can certainly score a mall try against England, so that may be one that the box have been looking at in their review, and England certainly would have been looking at in their review as well. England this season, their goal king percentage is a fair bit higher than the South Africans, 84% to 76 but as I said, who knows who's going to do the goal king for South Africa this week? Maybe Fuff. Uh, Willems is a bit erratic at times, but... Um, yeah, the South Africans have used a lot of different goal kickers. Uh, England win more turnovers. South Africa concede fewer clean breaks. South Africa's really hard to kind of get that catastrophic breakdown in their defense. They're, they're pretty stingy in that regard. Both sides tackle at 85%, so pretty similar. Um, South Africa are finishing games strong. They are scoring like 20, well, the last week was like 20 plus points, but they're usually getting into double digits in that final 20 minutes, which is more than most. So, uh, yeah, look out for South Africa finishing the game strong. Um, but interestingly, it's weird with England, it's kind of the flip side, whereas they're really stingy in the first 20 of each half, tend to concede more points in the second 20. So the end of the first half, end of the second half. So if you can buy an England tiring at the end of the second half with South Africa finishing well, you could be in for some trouble, but then that's just the trend. If you look at last week, when did England score all their bloody points against my All Blacks? <laughs> it was in the final 10, so uh, take it for what it's worth. Um, recent history is 3-2 to two to England. Remember, that does include a Rugby World Cup final. Uh, back in 2019, we got the English tour uh, of South Africa back in 2018 there as well, plus that controversial one-pointer at Twickenham uh, in 2018-2, plus the most recent game was 27-26, another one-pointer at uh, Twickenham, Marcus Smith with a late penalty to win that one. So yeah, pretty close. The average score across the last five is 20 points to South Africa, 18 points to England, the biggest win, uh, probably the World Cup final, 32-12, right? So apart from that, uh, the games tend to be pretty close. I mean... Uh, England did win 25-10 at Cape Town at the end of that tour. 
uh, back in 2018. But yeah, it's water well under the bridge by this point. Uh, predictions wise, England are the favourites. One point with the rugby forecast algorithm. Three points with the bookies. So we will see. Angus Gardner from Australia is the ref. It's a evening, early evening kickoff at Twickenham. Uh, which I think is like 6.30 in the morning over here in NZ, which is kind of perfect timing, not in the middle of the night for a change. So happy days. You guys let us know your thoughts. Who do you reckon is going to get the job done in this one? South Africa's B-side, if you can call it that. I wouldn't be calling it a B-side. Or uh, a slightly tinkered with but largely stable England. You guys let us know your thoughts. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.